uh, let's kick it off then. There has been a story doing the rounds on the interweb, um, not on the dark web, just on places that mainstream media don't go, about a politician and indeed a policy that is incredibly contentious, that I have contended for a while will be the most contentious issue of our next election. Co-governance and associated with that, the issue of the three waters policy that would look at co-governance in a practical sense for the country's water resources. Spearheading both those policies is Nanaya Mahuta. Nanaya Mahuta is the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs and also the Minister of Local Government. She is well connected in Māoridom. And it would appear um, from what we have verified as research, her family are well connected to these policies which are highly contentious. Can I say we have posted on our opinion slot on our website and on the app an article entitled Co-Governance, the Crown and the Mahuta Dynasty. And we use the word advisedly, a dynasty, a group of people who control or appear to control some significant amount of power over people. As I said, this story has been kicking round on a particular blog site for a while, but we decided the issues it raised were so important, prima facie so important, and raised such questions about public officials and the expenditure of public money that they were worthy of investigation. So our head of digital, Annie O'Brien, got into it, and she joins me uh, in the studio now. Annie Firstly, there were some big claims about what would apparently, to, I think to a reasonable person, be nepotism. And that is nepotism is when you're in a position of power and you make sure people associated with you or pe- members of your family more specifically um, do well out of the power that you wield. So you looked into these things on a, I think it was the Daily Examiner. You also talked to the person who generated this information. What did you find? I found that basically all of the claims about uh, the positions that the Mahuta family members were holding were completely correct. It's all public information. Um, It's all easily accessible. Um, There is no um, question um, of the the veracity of them uh, because there are press releases and and government websites saying that these people work in these roles. Um, the, The... Allegations of nepotism um, and even stronger ones Mm. um, are common online. But what we need to establish and what we need to really hear from the government and from the Prime Minister is how much of this was um, actually just known and they considered it to be absolutely fine, um, that we need some transparency around that. Because... Um, regardless of um, whether it was above board or not, the perception here is important and it's Mm. perception that is mentioned in the Cabinet Manual in terms of behaviour. Let's go through then the members of the Mm -hmm. Mahuta family and what roles they hold. Okay, so um, to start off with, we'll we'll start with her husband, um, who is William Gannon um, Ormsby. And uh, he sometimes goes by Gannon Ormsby. Mm, mm. So he, he spent um, about 12 years in the British um, Army. So he's a soldier, um, yep. Soldier. Um, and then he returned to New Zealand in 2001, took up a relationship with Nanaya Mahuta, and um, at that point started um, working in roles in local government um, and on various influential boards. Um, he has uh, a company um, called Ka Awatea Limited, um, and that uh, basically, according to their own website, um, is a um, organisation or consultancy that helps uh, iwi Fano hapu to um, uh, establish business connections to influence local government and central government. So it's quite explicit in that. It's on the website itself, and and that. So they uh, hook up. Maori businesses with Maori politicians, so like they're an access lobby firm. Essentially, yeah, yeah. Uh, that that's what they are claiming on their website, mm. and obviously that immediately raises a red flag because the minister of local government is his wife, 
Uh, so right, that's, but that's not a government job. He would go and get the money for the, for that work from private clients. So we haven't got taxpayers funded at prima facie involved there. Yeah. But the interesting thing is that company has now been hired by the taxpayer and by the government, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so um, as far as I can see, they also uh, are working the other way. So um, getting access to Māori um, and iwi businesses. Uh, but as you say, this is a case of a private business and it is almost separate from the issue of family members being given positions mm. on mm. Uh, boards and mm. um, various roles. It's it's a, a different type of issue. Uh, nonetheless, it's one that probably needs um, a little bit of sunlight put on it because uh, the perception anyway that is growing is that that's not on. Okay, has that... Uh, company done work and been paid by the taxpayer or by the government? Is it involved in the development of the Three Waters policy in the Hipuapua report? Um, so the the company itself, no, but the people involved. So there's three directors of the company. So Gannon Ormsby. Uh, That's Nanaima, who does husband. Husband, yep. And then two other family members, uh, Tamoko um, Ormsby, and I want to make sure that I pronounce this um, name right, but I think it was Waimari... Rangi, I think is how you yep, say it, yep. Ormsby. Um, so they are the three tr- um, directors of that company. Um, the uh, two, um, Tamoko and Waimari Rangi, um, they were part of Hepuapua, so they worked on that document. So that is the document laying out a, mm-hmm. a vision for a, a, a I guess, a, a, I guess a new framework for, for Māori's role constitutionally in New Zealand and in yes. the governance in New Zealand, very then, controversial report. Yes, and they're both named in it, um, so we have we can see that they've explicitly been part of the small group who uh, basically have uh, Written that put report. that together. And yeah. we presume they were paid by the government for that consultancy. Um, well, usually that's the case, yes. Okay, so Nanaya Mahutas has got her husband's company with relations of both of them working in that company, mm-hmm. getting paid by the government to develop Hipu-pu. Hipu-pu. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's the first so one. That's the first one. Now, um, the next one is uh, Nanaya Mahuta's sister, Tipa Mahuta. And um, by all accounts, she's an incredibly accomplished woman mm-hmm. um, and clearly very skilled. However, there are very interesting positions that she occupies. Mm-hmm. Um, so as you've said, co-governance is what is at heart here. Mm-hmm. And two of the key places where uh, co-governance is being um, pushed and rolled out is the health, Māori Health Authority and the Three Waters. Now, um, Tipa Mahuta is the co-chair of the Māori Health Authority, which puts her on Health New Zealand's board. Uh, and she is also... Um, the co-chair of the Māori Advisory Group for uh, Three Waters. So she holds two very significant positions within the co-governance space. All right. Um, How did she get appointed to those positions and was Nanaya Mahuta involved in those appointments? Well, the uh, Māori Health Authority one, it's um, likely to have been through um, Minister Andrew Little, that's not really connected here to mm-hmm. directly to Nanai Mahuta. However, um, when it comes to the Māori advisory group Tomata Arawai, which is the three water Waters advisory foot, group, yeah, um, basically it's a statutory appointment. So um, under se- Section 15 of, of the Regulator Act, um, Mahuta as Minister for Local Government had to consult with herself at the time, uh, Minister of Māori Development. To make the appointment. And also with Calvin Davis as uh, Māori Crown Relations Minister. So uh, that was who was to make the decision. Now, obviously, they've identified the conflict of interest here because briefly, um, and there is a a cabinet note, um, they have briefly transferred responsibility for the appointment to Calvin Davis. So he has... So Nanaima, he can say nothing to do with me. Yeah. Yeah, right. However, that is all that w- that was a brief transfer. As soon as the appointment was made, responsibility for for it all remains with Nanai Mahuta, and she uh, slotted has, back into the role. Yeah. So just it was like almost window dressing. Exactly. I'll stand aside while you appoint this person, and then I'll come back in and I'll yeah. work with that person. So the so relationship. The, the relationship is between the sisters. Okay. Yeah. Have conflicts of interest been declared around all of this? 
Um, apart from... Oh, well, the first off, have I missed anything? Has anyone else oh, got a more. job? Okay, let's go, let's go there. Have I missed any other jobs we didn't know about? All right. Yeah. Okay, so she also sits on the Waikato Regional Council. Uh, mm. She's responsible for managing natural resources, sitting on its strategy and policy subcommittee and on Team Maruata, the Māori Cross Council Committee of Local Government New Zealand, um, right. which puts into... Um, which provides input into local government and policies has been and wi- local government New Zealand has been widely criticised mm. for not following the wishes of its members who mm-hmm. oppose the three waters reforms. So exactly. okay, and just saying that that's a fact that's out there in the world. All right, so, so that, that's, that's it. That's all the jobs for the family that we can identify no. so far. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, so. Also, in addition, um, Tipa Mahuta is the iwi co-chair of Waikato River Authority. Uh, this was appointed by Waikato Tainui, who is um, is the Mahuta um, mm. iwi. Um, but it also gives her considerable power over the water resource there, um, and she has been involved in the um, disputes on whether um, the Auckland Council should be able to get access to that water um, mm. when there was some water crises. So there's... A little bit there. She's also on uh, the board of directors for Te Tahi Research Institute at Waikato University, just mm. by the by. I have no idea how she manages to fit it all yeah, in, to be honest. Very, that's but a it's very impressive. busy person. That is a very busy person. <laughs> um, but there's more. Yeah. So probably the most obvious, even though it's a smaller role, the most obvious situation that has raised some serious eyebrows is that in her capacity as Associate Minister for the Environment in 2020, Mahuta formed a group of five experts um, to develop the waste strategy for Aotearoa New Zealand. Um, so they were cons- they were described as technical experts and thought leaders with wide experience in the sector. Now, of waste management? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, three of the five uh, members of the Mahuta family. What... Hey, who 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 are they? It just so happens to be the three directors of Ka Awatea. So Mahuta's husband and um, Tamoko and Wai. And Mere let me Rangi. get this straight: the waste manage- management strategy is a nationwide waste strategy mm-hmm. management for the whole country, no matter whether you're Maori or Pakeha. Yes, so they're part of the Maori advisory. On and that. I presume they get paid for being on that. That or that would paid. be a fair assumption. All of these roles tend to have a mm. payment associated one. Well, with let's them. take the sister out. She's been elected to certain things and appointed, and that's mm. inside the government's purview. But mm-hmm. the uh, what's the name of the company that her husband runs again? Ka Awatea. Ka Awatea. Is Ka Awatea still involved in that waste management stuff or not? Um, as far as we can see, there's no... Um, Termination uh, of the yeah, arrangement. Yeah, so that's still being developed. but And that was only in 2020, so yeah. it's a relatively new... Can um, can we guess or, or obtain the figures as to how much money Ka Awatea has got through its association with the government? That is where we're at at the moment, is trying to establish that info. However, uh, we are going to have to go through um, the Official Information Act. And well, as we don't we know, have to. That just means that bureaucrats aren't telling you stuff in a timely manner and they're delaying you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. In terms of Ka Awatea as a company, who are its beneficial owners? Um, just the three, so the three directors. The sole shareholder is um, is Gannon Ormsby, who is Mahuta's husband. Okay. Yeah. So no money's going back to Nanai Mahuta, as far as we know. Well, well, I suppose it goes to her husband. It goes to her household. I suppose as a, as a couple. Um, I mean, we don't know their banking arrangement, but she. But the uh, issue there is that um, a partner, a, a husband of a minister, probably shouldn't be. Um, getting income from access to the minister. Uh, however, what has also raised some red flags is that in um, her pecuniary declarations, uh, Nanaya Mahuta has disclosed that she has beneficiary interest in a trust called Mahuta Family Trust, oh, sorry, Mahuta Fano Trust. Mm. Um, and there is no transparency around who else has access, access to that trust. Given it's a Fano trust, you would expect that other m- members of the Fano would also have interest in it mm. as be- beneficiaries or trustees. Yeah, but there's nothing illegal in running a trust no, or, or a blind trust, is there? No, uh, as we know from John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Gannon Normsey, I just want to make this clear, he's not an expert in waste disposal as far as we know, or as waste management. As far as we know, prior What to about the people at Car with Is there anyone who sticks out there as a, a super expert in waste disposal? The two other family members are quite young. Um, 
they are both have um, they've been are they uh, cousins or something or that the, they're married to each other. Um, oh. So um, and they have been heavily involved in um, Maori and environmental politics as youngsters. So right. they they were part of a rangatahi group that went to the UN um, to uh, advocate uh, for basically the implementation of the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, which mm. we all know is part of this. Um, and so they are, um, they probably, I think, could be seen as probably too young to have the experience that, that is would being be required claimed. here. Okay. Annie, I want to go back to the guy who got the same. Uh, you and I have been talking this out for a while. You've been keeping an eye on it and, and doing this work on it. It hasn't made mainstream media. What? No. And we have decided to keep the identity of the person who, if you like, generated the story into this research. Mm. He, he wants to be anonymous. I would like you, without identifying, to tell me about him. Is he a person who has been involved in politics in New no, Zealand? No, no, he hasn't. He's actually been overseas uh, for a while and has returned. Uh, so he's been actually out of the loop, if you like. Yeah. Um, he is um, an accomplished professional. I, I can't say too yeah. much about what kind of yeah. profession, but in following the tracking kind of what's going on here, um, he he is very qualified to be um, investigated. And as far as you can establish, not a person who is being funded or paid by any other political party or any other group no. to stir the pot here. What's his motivation? And I know you've had conversations with him. Yeah, so he actually... Um, he is motivated, I think, by what a lot of the people who are talking about it are motivated by, mm. which is um, um, an immense concern for the direction of the country with co-governance and having noticed that there is one family who is holding these positions which are driving that, uh, it, it drew him to want to look to it closer. Mm. In terms of political connections, I cannot um, see any... I know that um, he has um, approached uh, National and given them the information. However, he required um, help to access them, so I don't think that they yeah. are yeah. Um, involved at all. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I want to clear that up, and, of course, when you give mm. someone anonymity, questions are raised about their mm. motivation. But the fact is you have checked this out. These are facts. These are They're, publicly these available. Publicly available facts, and mm -hmm. they form a picture that I think Māori or Pākehā, one would raise quest questions mm -hmm. over. Um, has there been any official response from the Nāia to from the Labour government, from the individuals involved to all this? Have there been declarations of conflict of interest? And has anyone assessed whether or not any New Zealand or, or political conventions, the Cabinet Manual, has been breached in any way? Uh, so uh, when I've reached out to um, Minister Mahuta's office, I haven't had a response. I, I spoke to a staff member who didn't want to speak to me yesterday. Well, well hang um, on, did they just say no comment or did they just not want to engage? They didn't want to engage and I tried to get a phone number for another member of staff who I know works closely with the Minister. Um, they gave me an email address and I didn't get um, any further contact from the Minister okay, or and we've sent them an email, so yep. engage. Okay, and that's yep. an open, this is an open invitation to anyone from the Labour government. And indeed I know uh, to uh, Nanaya Mahuta, who I imagine is tied up with the tangi for uh, um, Mr Hawke uh, today. Um, this is an open and standing invitation for anyone from the Labour government, anyone associated with the Mahuta family or Nanaya Mahuta herself to contact us for a discussion about what has gone on here. Prima facie, though, we don't have any laws broken. There is no investigations underway. This no, has been... it seems to have raised no flags um, either in the, the media up until this point or uh, in government itself. The opposition um, hasn't raised anything yet. Um, but however, if you have a look at the Cabinet Manual... Um, there is a section, obviously, regarding conflict of interest. And um, it says conflict of interest 
may arise if people close to a minister, such as a minister's family, Fano, or close associates, might derive or be perceived as deriving uh, perceived. Yeah, yeah. some personal, financial, or other benefit from a decision or action by the minister or the government. Um, and it does also um, go on to um, talk about um, proposing family members for appointments, which obviously um, would be mm. good to get cleared up, um, and, and various other things. But uh, the really interesting part for me is that it clarifies again a little further down that public perception is a very important factor. If a conflict arises in relation to um, interests, ministers should take appropriate action, and that is based purely on perception, because mm. perception is important here, according to the Cabinet Manual. So let's sum up, mm -hmm. and I want people to ring in or to um, email us, hello at the platform Kiwi. Let's sum up what we've got here. We've got a minister who's the Minister of Local Government. Is she still the Minister of Murray Development? No, no, she's, no not. she's not. That's okay. now Willie Jackson. Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, and if you like, running point on Three Waters, contentious policy, the Hapuapua Report, heavily involved in, which and both those things raise issues of co-governance. A company owned by her husband was involved in, a, in the development of waste management policy, which <laughs> ties up, I think, with Three Waters probably, and yes. also the development of the Hipuapua report. Yeah, two of its directors were involved. Two of its directors were involved, and as far as we know, everyone, all of its directors are members, one way or another, of the Mahuta's family. On the other side, her sister, a highly qualified and effective bureaucrat, seems to have positions on almost everything. Everything related to co-governance. And yeah. that is the key here, yeah. is that she has um, immense power for the Māori Health Authority mm. and she has immense power when it comes to natural resources and, and the three waters. Ani, great work. Really good work. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed and for, for walking us through that today. Uh, I can pretty well predict, well, let's see. I, I would like to see, and this is what part of what the platform does, I'd like to see other mainstream news media pick up this story. They haven't had the courage to yet. I wonder if it would be in breach of their agreements for public sector funding to raise questions around this sort of issue. I wonder if they are constrained by the Public Interest Journalism Fund and their taxpayer funding not to look and we are not saying here, we are not accusing anyone of breaking the law or acting illegally, but this involves public appointments, public policy and public funds. And it is the news media's role to shine a light where questions exist. That is all we are doing this morning. I know we're going to get called racist, uh, but these this is exactly what journalists and the media should do in a functional democracy.